What's going on people? Welcome to the United Stand. We're here in England. Finally going to a game in England, except that the game's not technically in England. It's in Wales. Last game of pre-season. And before we talk about that game, transfer news, transfer news, transfer news. And the same old story, Maguire deal's done. We'll talk a little bit about that in a second. But the latest breaking news um, regarding Dybala, and this is breaking from, um, I think it's Richard Romano, um, that Dybala's chosen Man United. He's, um, well, you say chosen, backed into a corner, poked with a stick and made to choose Manchester United. Um, but the latest reports is that he's made his mind up after being told, um, obviously, that Juventus don't want him. We already know that Juventus have said, don't come back till Monday. You don't need to report for training. Um, and he's gone off and, and had to think about his future. Um, and I saw some quotes saying that, you know, not from the Dybala, but from, from, the, from the journalist Romano, sort of saying that Manchester United is still a prestigious club, even though they're not in Champions League. Um, the opportunity to play there, la di da di da um, Look, at the end of the day, we will never truly know if this still happens. If this still happens. We will never truly know the real reason Dybala come to United. Well, you could probably make your own mind up. For me, I will always have in my head that it was never a match made in heaven and a dream move. Um, yes, I'm not mugging off our club and it is a prestigious, prestigious club, but let's not, be, let's not get it twisted here, yeah? Dybala has flipping, like I said, been backed into a corner. He's come back off of his holiday and been told that his girlfriend don't want him. That's what's happened. Imagine, imagine you go to work away, yeah? You come back, you've been with your missus for what? Four or five years, whatever. Everything's going fine, yeah? And you get back and she says, uh, I'm not feeling you no more. I'm not feeling you no more, but you have a new thing. You've got a girl there ready. She said, like, well, let's go on a date now. In fact, let's not even go on a date. Let's get straight in another relationship. You know the man who just needs to be in a relationship and jump straight into a new one. That's what this is like. That's what this is like. It's kind of like he's gone, well, actually, you don't want me anyway. You're kicking me out the yard. You're kicking me out. What would you want me to do? So um, if it happens, it, I think it would scream a lot of that for me. That doesn't mean it's going to be a shit move. It doesn't mean that um, it won't work. I just think that... I think in an ideal world, he probably wouldn't have chose to come to Manchester United just like that. But things change in the world of work. If your employer doesn't want you, you have to find a new job. Do you know what I'm saying? I know it's a bit different for footballers. He could literally stump his foot down and say, I ain't going, get all legal about it um, and technical about it um, and just choose to sit there on his big wages and not play. He could do that. He could do a Gareth Bale. Um, but he wants to play football, I'm, I'm assuming. Um, and it looks like the deal, the deal could happen. It looks like the deal could happen. Now, a lot of things that were discussed um, in, in, in some of the reports was this Mandzukic thing. You know, Sky were reporting that Manchester United, um, Sky UK were reporting that Manchester United would want um, Dybala, um, sorry, would want Mandzukic if they can't get Dybala and swap Mandzukic for Lukaku. If Oli did that, yeah, he would need to talk to Frank. I'm being serious. He would need to talk to Frank because he would need some serious help because Sarri's smoking something for this exchange. But if Oli was to do that, I don't know what the hell this guy would be on. Uh, Mandzukic is like, look, 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 let's face it, Mandzukic, what is he, like 33? He would love to come to United. He's probably thinking, Pinek, my next move is, is China. Retirement home, do you know what I'm saying? Um, a bit part player for Juventus uh, last year. Don't get me wrong, comes with a lot of pedigree, scored a lot of goals. But um, just like how the Boateng thing was last year, I don't want man coming to Manchester United to retire. I don't, I don't want that at all. And that's what that would be um, with Mandzukic. And then the, the Sky Italia were reporting that it wasn't that they want um, Mandzukic instead of Dybala if they can't get him. It was, it was in fact that they want both. They want both. Um, and I don't know about that. I, if he wants to come as part of the deal and just kind of be... Um, be a, be a plan B striker, maybe even plan C, because if you're thinking about it, if Dybala comes, he, he could play at the, in the nine, or obviously on the right, and Martial looks like he's going to be our, num our starting number nine. Uh, if he wants to become a B plan B striker for us and sit on the bench, I don't really care if he comes with Dybala, uh, a different option, but don't get it twisted, he can't come instead of Dybala, um, just for Lukaku, no, no way, no way. So, yeah, um, it looks like, like I said, to finish off on the Dybala thing, it looks like the deal could happen. Where he was like hearing a lot of reports that um, you know Dybala doesn't want to go to United and he'd rather stay. And blah, blah, blah. I think the player's starting to realise. Well, pff, yeah, he probably does want to stay because he wants to stay. He's come back off his holiday and didn't want to leave the club. But because Sarri's gone to him, yo, listen, what, Bridget, you're gone. Like I, I'm not feeling you anymore. You're not part of my plans. 
and um, the Bala what he's just coming into his prime now um, and he needs he needs to play he needs to play so look it looks like the deal could happen fingers crossed that it does but I'm still in the camp of if it's instead of Bruno Fernandes which depending on how you're looking at it I, I, I think it could be I think it could be I, I really do hope it's not I'm still gonna cling on to the fact that we'll get two more done in in um, in um, and in um, Dybala and Fernandez, but the Fernandez front's really quiet right now, man. Really quiet, and that just makes me think, oh, just I, I can't see it. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna cling on. I'm gonna cling on to that fact. Um, interesting news about Paul Pogba in terms of um, he's obviously not in the squad today, out with a back spasm. Um, back spasm, eh? Um, nah, he, I think he's, he's injured. And look, we've got the game against Chelsea next week, season opener, so there's no point risking him. Um, for this game today but the interesting news is that Real Madrid are in advanced talk with um, Ajax they're in advanced talks with Ajax um, over the midfield of Van der Beek or Van der Beek depending on how you how you pronounce it good player young player saw him shine last year in the Eredivisie and obviously saw him shine in, in Ajax's flipping Champions League run um, and looks a good player looks a very good player but what it, what you would what you would take from that is is that it looks like that they're not in for Paul Pogba um, especially especially this season um, this summer so it looks like Pogba's going to stay which we probably all knew that anyway in terms of how this transfer window's played out at the beginning of the transfer window when he said those comments I was I thought he's nailed on to leave I thought there's no way back um, but I suppose football's a funny thing really if, if you don't get your move then you have to knuckle down and play and football's a funny game if, if Pogba stays and has a fantastic season or starts playing well it kind of will be forgotten about to a certain extent I, I think there's a lot of fans that I speak to who he will never win them over because even if he starts playing good all it will be is um, well he's playing for a move because he knows he's going next summer which I, I which look let's, let's face it Paul Pogba's I think barring a miracle and a massive turnaround and we start getting amazing players and really competing uh, in, in, in this year I, I can't see him staying longer than next year anyway um, I could be wrong but that's just my gut feeling on that but uh, listen on to today's game Man United versus AC Milan um, the last game of pre-season. Josh, it's the last game of pre-season. How does that feel? Happy? Yeah! <laughs> this guy's been working around the clock. Um, look, it, look, it's the last game and what it does show us, although it is still a friendly, it shows us Oli's thinking going into the season. He said, um, it was before we even went on the pre-season tour, I can't remember what journal it was that asked him, um, but, he, but basically Oli said that this AC Milan game was always going to be a game where he pretty much would know his side, he pretty much knows how we want to play, we've been working on it all summer and he's just fine tuning it barring a few injuries and that's what I took from the answer he gave that day and that's what I stand by, I think he, if he doesn't know his, his kind of rough starting 11 slash probably confirmed starting 11 barring any injuries by now then um, what would be the point of the whole pre-season, do you know what I mean, what would be the point, so for me I think he'll know his, his best team, I want. this is the team I want to see, this is the team I want to see, I want to see right back Obviously, Bissaka in goal, obviously David De Gea. Right back, Aaron Juan Bissaka. I want to see Lindelof. It would be Maguire, but his medical is due um, over the weekend and should be, I would say, confirmed by Monday slash Tuesday. Um, so in his absence and the absence of Eric Bailly, I would go to and Zabi. I would go to and Zabi and Lindelof for today's game. Obviously, sure. Midfield three, obviously Pogba's not in it. He's injured, so I would have to go with McTominay, Pereira and Fred. I would go with Matic is just you know my thoughts on him um, I, I still think he's going to be a mainstay in the team Rance doesn't really think he will be um, I think that Matic should be replaced by McTominay I'm sure a lot of you do as well maybe some of you don't but um, from what I've seen especially in pre-season is that we just don't need Matic in there anymore keep him for, for games where we, we need him here and there um, so yeah uh, McTominay Fred and Pereira as my midfield three and then my front three would be Rashford through the middle Sorry, Rashford on the left, um, Martial through the middle, and I would go with, I'd give Mason Greenwood a start. I'd give Mason Greenwood a start, um, just to say, you know what, kid? Last game before the, 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 game, the season starts next week, go and have a good one, go and get yourself another goal. You never know, could make him start against Chelsea. I'd just throw him in between him and Danny James anyway, but obviously Oli will pick wisely between them. But um, yeah, it'll be a good competitive game. Look, AC Milan aren't what they were, but at least it won't be as bad as the Fippin Christensen game um, where they're just doing nothing <laughs> against the shit team um, so it'll be a lot more competitive and I, I want to see that level of intensity um, as it's the last game before pre-season I'm predicting I'm predicting a 
Three one win for Man United today. Three one win. Um, yeah, goal scorers. I'm going to go with Martial. I'm going to go with Mason Greenwood, obviously if he plays. And I'm going to go with Pereira from midfield. Why not? I'm going to go with Pereira from midfield. So yeah, um, we will see you guys at the game. First road trip of the season. Like I said, it's nice to actually not be on a plane or going through passport security. Um, it's nice to get the three hour drives back again. Hey Josh. That's right. Uh, um, and we'll see you guys after the fan comes. We're going to be doing a great vlog today um, with one football. Um, we're going to be pitch side um, and in the media room as well. I think we're in the presser as well. Um, gosh, what, what's going on here? Me and Josh just getting let loose in the, in, in behind the scenes. I think uh, our footage from um, <laughs> our footage from from tour is uh, is spreading global, and these people want us behind the scenes. They don't want the stereotypical journalists. They want us crazy ass YouTubers. Um, so yeah, uh, we're on the road now. Get out of here. Let me listen to some music. And I will see you guys on the other side. Drop a like on the video. Make sure you subscribe to United Stand. Um, the subscribers are just flying up. Keep engaging with it. And if there's any breaking news before then, um, I'm sure that we'll be going live with instant reactions. But until then, I will see you guys after the fan cams. Peace.